let's let's take a look at some of uh, your work because it seems to fit in so well with the the mystic exploratory yeah. personal concepts. Okay, yeah, I put together just a, a variety of things that I do. And you share those with us. You know, you are part of the group. You you tell us about your process and your life and what you're working on and how you've changed it. And you're open to feedback from from other students, too. Right. I'm doing the artwork with, with you all. Um, now, this is something, maybe it's about six years old or so. Um, it's a water. So I, I've been working in watercolor. Uh, for a while now, and I use a watercolor crayon a lot. Um, so I've kind of developed my own thing, but it's changing. This is a detail of a larger piece. Um, and uh, this is a more recent piece, um, part of this tree series that I've been doing. And um, I have some beautiful uh, old growth redwood and around the house here in California. So I'm really blessed to be living on land that has so much nature. And I've, uh, so it, it comes out in my art. It's um, a big relationship with the trees. So this is a another way of working, right? Uh, uh, more, uh, more realistic watercolor. Um, and then this is something well, that I worked on for a long time, but it started in class, working in a beginning from nowhere, not knowing what was going to come. I did have an idea about this Nataraj figure. Um, and uh, turned into something kind of uh, autobiographical, you know, myself meditating, and um, then these other other figures. Um, and it took me a long time to 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 evolve this piece, and I ended up using oil crayon. And this is a piece I did. Uh, about 10 years ago when I uh, did the creativity uh, retreat at Spirit Rock Meditation Center with Barbara Kaufman, who was um, a great process teacher. And um, this, this is the last piece I did there. It was really, really a pivotal uh, time for me there. So this is uh, a couple years ago, I started something in charcoal and watercolor and it got really dark and um, it went through all kinds of changes. And in the end, it has some kind of feeling to it, <laughs> which is really what I'm mo most concerned about. And, um, and uh, I think the you know these are the women in my paintings are actually all myself. Um, they're they're my anima, as Jung would say. Um, they're they're aspects of my my feminine self. Uh, this is another piece I did from class. Uh, actually, it, it's no it no this started out as a sketch from. I did it in class, but it started from a sketch of me meditating uh, with the trees. And in the class, it turned into this. So all kinds of figures um, that, and so this is a thing we can do in class is we can pop into the images and it's, it, boy, it's, Amazing to see it when you're looking at these master artists over time. Um, it's another recent piece of this tree series I'm working on. It's another one. And uh, here's another piece from class. 
uh, working with ink and watercolor and oil crayon and uh, yeah, I this was when we were getting into more of the mixed media stuff after I stopped using tempera because of allergies to the tempera, I moved into the mixed media. Um, so here's uh, some shots of the uh, workshops I've been doing outdoors. And my friends, uh, Patricia's beautiful garden. And so I like to mix the somatic uh, piece in. Um, and e even in the classes, it's optional for people who want to do that. You can see there's a bit of our altar in the middle there. Couple of shots from the Sebastopol Center for the Arts where we were before I went online. There's Jennifer there. Yeah, so. I think the mixed media has been a blast. I liked it when we had tempo, that was fun. But and when we switched, I think everybody has loved the playing with all these different materials. It's loosened everybody up. It's given all kinds of uh, dimension to the cre our creations by using crayon and using chalk and using paint, and using transparent paint and opaque paint and ink and whatever else we can get our hands on. And it really hasn't been, wasn't really that expensive to replicate it either at home. You, you, you just, you showed us some of them, you know, you were using reasonably priced materials and then we just were able to kind of collect and share. I know I have sent some pastels to someone that wanted to try them and you know, the community of, of sharing we had someone doing acrylic inks and you know that's really been something I think is very underrated for painters is to just be free with their medium and experimental and not get, get too tied into being a watercolorist or an oil painter or you know, so. Yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's great for people who are been working in one medium for a long time to jump out of that into something new and experience a whole new thing, you know, and or 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 mixed media, um, and also um, one of the women in my Wednesday class, a couple of the women. Um, they write, so they they write poetry, they write prose, and they paint. So one day they might do writing, or a little bit of both, and I think that's great. You know, um, sometimes you uh, have us dialogue with our paintings, and and I wondered if you do that with yours. Uh not so much, but it's fun to do in in class. Uh, to to ask to to speak to the painting as if it's a an entity unto itself, a, a living, breathing being, and dialogue with it, uh, and and ask it questions. Um, especially, I think, useful for people who are who are maybe newbies, uh, who don't, uh, wh whose images carry so much power and just to have them, um, have their images on their walls uh, over time and having a, having a dialogue with them. You don't even really have to talk to them because you are talking to them subconsciously if they're there in your on your wall right and i so, think the way we end the class with showing our work that we've done during the hour and saying really what came up for us you know what it means what it represents how we felt i know the first time i decided to paint butterflies and i had never tried it before even though i was an experienced painter 
and how awkward that felt and how that shared experience was something everybody could relate to. And, and also it's pretty fascinating seeing how some of the individual life experience comes into these to these things and moves people to the next thing too. That, that yeah. shared dialogue at the end is, of class is really interesting. It'd be fun when we get back to those longer classes too to be able to dialogue a little bit more. We pack a lot into our sessions between our the altars that we create and our meditation and our slides and our painting and our sharing. It's the time just flies by. <laughs> yeah. Say goodbye. Um, yeah, you know, the sharing piece at the end, we, we don't give it a, enough time, but I think it's really important. And I know that um, in a lot of process painting groups, um, they don't, they're not so into sharing um, their work because they may not, people may not want to share and they feel too vulnerable or they don't want to get in the way of their process by encouraging or um, making any comment that might influence the artist. But I, I really see it in a different way. I think that um, it's really important to get the, the appreciation of other artists for what for what you're doing and to see it through other people's eyes. Yes. And um, it, it's, it's also an art uh, for all of us to be able to, how do we, how do we want to comment? What are we, what are we saying? Um, how do we, how do we lead the person um, more into a place of, of inquiry um, where, cause, because no, no meaning is final. No, the, when you're working with symbols, as as Young said, um, the symbol is this very alive creature, and because you can't pin it down, it 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 just uh, bright, lights us up. Uh, because it's numinous, it's 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 just it's an enigma, and it it goes really deep into all these many different levels. So we can only kind of take see it shimmering there and talk about it, but we can't wrap it up, you know, and so. This is, I think, this is an art form in itself, you know, discussing art and, and, and also um, aesthetic appreciation is something that I'm very interested in. And I found um, in my, through my spiritual um, journeying, um, that this was something that was a highly refined um, uh, art form, you might say. Um, aesthetic inquiry or aesthetic rapture was a form of yoga that was pra practiced in ancient India, as still practiced today. And so I, this is another thing I bring into class is Simple, um, uh, what happens when we, when we, we ingest something through our eyes, um, it's opening ourselves up and taking the time to really let that sink in. Um, this is part of our inquiry. Um, and so, when that gets more heightened, um, our appreciation of art gets more heightened and our appreciation in daily life of, of life becomes m more vivid. Well, you know, when I hear you talk about that, I think about how my own um, enthusiasm and passion has grown for making art. And part of that is what you said about the symbols, you know, you can't pin it down. But there's this this longing to to be part of the understanding of it and this 
the aesthetic experience too. You know, those are all, this is not typical what goes on either in a technique class or a process class. It makes it really so unique and the, the connection just seems to grow stronger over time and the, the interest in what you can learn and then to see other examples throughout history of these, these artists that you've selected for us, it just becomes more and more interesting and exciting. I think that this talk that we're having gives a lot of great information on many different levels. And I'm glad you've had a chance to really delve into some of what it is that Bo is behind your amazing teaching. So that mm -hmm. it's nothing, it's not just getting a bunch of mixed needle materials and putting them in a space. It's, 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 you bring there's so much depth to, to what we're discovering together. Mm -hmm. It's pretty amazing. Thank you. I'm a big fan. <laughs> I, I, I'm, a couple of quotes are coming to mind here. I, I often uh, quote uh, artists uh, in class and uh, I send out quotes after class. Um, like Pablo Picasso said, um, you, one doesn't make a painting, one, doesn't, one makes studies, one never ends getting nearer. And is you know what are you getting nearer to? There again, you can't. You he, he couldn't name what that was, and he's also saying there's never a, an end. There's never a completion, and this now that goes against again a lot of the process work, completing your painting. Well, there's no completion. There's just a stopping. Yeah, you can have a a, a catharsis. <laughs> during your art making, but you're also going to have your 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 downtime, your difficult time. Um, also, Henry Matisse said, um, uh, "Derive happiness from a good day's work and from illuminating the fog that surrounds us." Hmm. What did he mean by that? So to me, it, it, it's, it's, he's talking about the fog of what gets, what gets in the way of knowing the beauty that we are, the beauty of life. And what, he talked about the underlying reality that he was trying to bring forth with his artwork through beauty. Through, through his way of simply stating um, color and form, um, this is a this is a whole uh, language that people aren't using anymore. However, mystics have been using this language all along. Um, Ramana Maharshi said. Uh, enter with love the temple that is your own heart, silently allowing the deep within to flow on and into the deep beyond. A bit different, maybe, but the same general idea. You know, Matisse said, um, that the essential idea is the essential thing is to create, move yourself into a state that is close to prayer, to paraphrase. And keep your naivete, right? Oh, he, he also that's said, my favorite, yeah, yeah, he also said, um, he also said, you study and you learn, but you guard your original naivete. I mean, that says, so much. Um, that says so much to me. I always come back to that. And when I encourage beginner beginners to paint, it's that's where you want to keep them coming back to so that you don't have to have your grown up adult judging self stop you from creating and making marks. It's just yes. a, a very poignant kind of a. Um, 
um, fine line to encourage adults to keep their naivete and to encourage also professional painters that they're allowed to play and, and bring their childish, childlike selves and curiosity and magic into this form when they become so established in a certain way. You know, it's, it's, it's an interesting, and you start to see your view of what interesting work and interesting paintings and successful paintings really start to change in your own work and in others as they become less what you imagine would be the most beautiful and successful painting to what's really interesting and truthful and brings something from the past and something from deep inside. It's a, it's really a change, the process of change for everyone that's involved. Yeah, and and uh, a lot of people think, well, I can't really do that unless I can't really just play like a child or go to my original naivete because I'm not a Henri Matisse. I didn't I didn't learn how to be a master painter, so I don't I I can't give myself permission to do that. But that's not that's not right. Well, that hits that, the nail on the head because that's what everyone thinks. That's it. I'm not, I'm not, I don't draw well enough to let myself be childhood. I even have that come to mind. I work on something and I think, oh, wish my drawing skills are better. And I think doesn't everybody, that's what everybody's judge, adult has to say about this. And the more we do it, hopefully we'll be letting go of that. Yeah. I keep that, those Matisse quotes that you send us after class. I have them printed out. I have them in my studio and come back to that because the, the, overpowering negativity is all too strong but I feel very fortunate that I let go of any kind of striving to have to have gallery shows and have a have a gallery represent me and um I, I never my heart was never really in it I never really wanted to I make a, a better living in my profession and I but I felt like I should like I needed to like I didn't I was invisible unless I did that and now with this community, I feel very seen and I feel that, that I don't have to put a lot of that energy into marketing that I never really liked. <laughs> this was never my thing. So, but at the same time, it's the um, more dedicated if, than I was, if not more so, to, to really discovering my, my journey as a painter. So thank you for that. and. and What's this week? <laughs> I was just thinking of that because uh, tomorrow I was going to show Leonora Carrington, the uh, incredible surrealist painter. Um, and she said that, uh, to paraphrase, um, I paint for myself and I don't expect anybody to buy my work and I could care less. However, she did make her living as an artist right but at some point she that just showed her commitment to painting from this inner inner core you know and this is the thing that all these mystic artists had they painted for themselves and they didn't paint for the market well that all has changed right we live in su uh, such a market driven you know, society, well, you know, was back then too, but still they shifted their styles. They shifted their interest because they were painting more for themselves, for their muse. Right. And so I'm trying to, part of my, my whole thing is trying to bring that back. Um, painting for the muse, painting for, what's deep in ourselves and yeah somebody likes your work they want to buy it okay but not painting for the market yeah and deciding how much time we want to spend marketing what it is we do create and that's fine too you know that's a that's a way to share what we do if we so choose and it's been fun to see that some of the painters that you put them were commercially very successful, and some just didn't even show their work until after they were dead. That's right. So um, that you know, it gives us that kind of range of, of permission, and also right. allows the process to come into it. So right, and and I do show um, 
artists who were untrained. Uh, being from Chicago, uh, I, you know, there the there was a whole tradition or um, a lot of interest in um, untrained art artists, and uh, so I like to show them because they're masters too. They're mystics too. Um, we get so, to see, you kind of get to see Annalisa going down that path. She doesn't really know that. She just just domestic. What she always says, "I'm just messing around." Yeah, but she has something special, and she'll be yeah. she'll be finding her way, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Her. her work should be she should be seen. Yeah. I think definitely. Um. Have we about covered it or? It seems like it. Yeah, we could go on all day, but it seems like yeah. we've done most of the important things that are so meaningful to the two of us that we share. Mm -hmm.